Hey everybody, welcome back to Photorec.tv. I'm Toby and I wanna to talk about using your iPad as a backup solution when you travel. I pretty consistently bring my laptop. It makes it super easy to back up photos and videos, edit those photos and videos while I'm traveling, and allows me to teach Lightroom Classic and Photoshop while on workshops. Now, I realize that last one is pretty specific to me, but you add up all of those different options that a laptop gives me, and it's incredibly rare that I'm gonna leave my laptop at home on most of my travels. But many of our guests that come on workshops don't need all of that. And there are times where I'm traveling on short personal trips. I don't need all of that. All I really need is a decent backup solution that allows me to check in on a few photos and make sure that things look the way I expect them to, and maybe occasionally edit. And the question, can the iPad do this? Definitely. It offers several options for backing up raw files. I've been exploring each of these options the last couple of days, and let's just say each option has some issues. We're gonna take a look at each of them. Feel free to use the clickable table of contents right down below to find the app that you think is gonna work best for you. This video is brought to you by Squarespace, who by the way, have a fantastic iPad app, useful for updating your website or checking in on analytics. Look, it's 2022. You need to have a place of your own to display your beautiful photos. Squarespace makes it so easy with their gorgeous starting templates. Start at squarespace.com slash TV. You get a completely free 14-day trial, no credit card required. When you do go to buy, you save 10% off your purchase. All right, I've got three methods I wanna talk about in this video. Let's say 3.5. We've got the built-in Photos app. That's Apple's Photos app. Then I wanna talk about using the Lightroom Mobile. It's just called Lightroom these days. It's the version of Lightroom that will run on iPads and mobile devices. And finally, let's talk about the Files app. And I said 0.5, there's actually a better version of the Files app made by a third party. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. Now, as I said, each of these has their pros and cons. Couple of caveats, your iPhone or iPad will need iOS 13 or later. iOS 15 works even better. And you're probably gonna want an external drive. If you're just going on a short weekend trip, you're only gonna generate maybe a couple hundred pictures and you've got plenty of room on your device, then you don't. But for most of us, when we travel for more than a couple of days, capturing a lot of pictures, we just don't have the space on our iPads. And so you're gonna want an external drive. The SanDisk SSD works, and it should be formatted as macOS journaled, though the XFAT format works well too. And that does allow you to share files between Mac and Windows if that's important to you. Honestly, out of this whole process, it's the drives that work or don't work that makes this the most finicky, frustrating. I've got this SanDisk I said works. This older DJI fly drive works just fine. This Lacey two terabyte SSD does not work consistently. This smaller, actually it's not smaller, physically smaller, but it is still a two terabyte SSD from SanDisk, very similar to this one, doesn't show up reliably. And they're all formatted in a way that should. So that is frustrating. So you might want to really, before you dive in too far, figure out what's going to work best for you drive-wise. I can, as I said, recommend this SanDisk, and I'll link that right down below. Another thing you want to keep in mind is you're probably going to need a hub. If you're going to import lots of files, more than you have space for on the iPad, you really need to just kind of pass them through the iPad from the camera or the SD card to the external drive, and a hub is going to do that for you. There are lots of cheap hubs out there, so you wanna be careful that you get a good one. I've been very happy with this Anchor. It provides an SD card slot, two USB-C ports, one of those for power. And that's important because some of these drives are gonna require power coming to the iPad and the hub at the same time to make sure that the drive gets enough power so that it works. And, and you also wanna make sure that you're buying a decently fast hub. As I said, there's lots of cheap ones out there. And whatever you do, please test this a few times before you take off on your trip. It's a huge bummer to get out on your trip and realize that whatever setup you have is not working consistently or takes a million years to copy a few files. Now I mentioned iOS 13, iPhones and iPads. Yeah, this can all work on an iPhone too. Now you are in a much smaller interface. It's a little bit more cumbersome to work with large numbers of files. 
but it will work. As I said, I'll link to all the products that I found to be working right down below, along with some of the programs that I'm going to mention in this and the iOS help guides, which I found to be very straightforward and kind of explaining exactly what you need. Again, I'm working with a USB-C uh, based iPad. If you're not, then you want to get the ports or the connectors, the lightning that's right for you. Whew. I think we're ready to get started. Okay, let's start with a pretty straightforward setup using Apple's Photos app. So this is Apple's photo editing program. It comes installed on the iPad and any laptop or desktop you own and a couple of pros. One, there's absolutely no cost for this program. It's already installed on your iPads. It's very easy to import photos and it's very easy to show what has already been imported, which I really appreciate when traveling because each night I import my pictures, but I continue to reuse those cards until they're full. So I import pictures, do not reformat the card, continue to shoot on it the next day. And for me, that's generally a couple of days of shooting on larger SD cards. I like this because out in the field, I know I have on my person all of the pictures I've shot up to that moment and back at the hotel or on the ship, whatever my home base is while I'm traveling, I have all of the previous day's pictures backed up. That right there is two copies of every pictures, and that is a good start in the backup process when I'm traveling. The Photos app, it offers decent editing capabilities, nothing super exciting, but certainly good enough while traveling for sharing a quick photo or two while traveling. And you do have the option of online backup through iCloud. You have to have decent internet while traveling, but if you do, it means these files will be waiting for you in photos at home on your Mac desktop or laptop. And you can export slash save these files to an external drive through the Photos app, which means you can make an extra backup or move these to the external to save space on your iPad. But this is where things get a little messy. So let's jump into the drawbacks of the Photos app. If you're shooting RAW plus JPEG and import from a card with RAW and JPEG on it, it's going to force you to bring in both versions and then it will only let you move or export the JPEGs to an external drive. That's frustrating and there is no good workaround for this at that time. This means if you want full raw backup, you need to have enough room on your internal iPad's memory because that's where you're going to be forced to store these raws and you can't move them off. Or you could choose to shoot raw only in your camera or import from a card that has only raw on it because when you do, then the Photos app allows you to move slash copy slash save the RAWs from that app to an external drive. Now, I mentioned iCloud. The free version provides just five gigabytes. I mean, that's really nothing. I'm holding a 128 gigabyte card in my hand and I will fill this up usually in a few days. You pay $10 a month and you get two terabytes of storage and that's reasonable and similar to the storage costs from both Adobe and Dropbox. Now paying is only necessary if you really need or want the online backup system to work and have these pictures appear on your laptop or desktop in the photos program once you're back home. And again, I want to really stress that this depends on the internet at the location where you're traveling. And let me just tell you, as someone that has traveled the world and large swaths of the US, it is very common that I see internet speeds all over the US that do not support uploading more than a handful of pictures overnight. So don't get too excited about the idea of online backups while traveling unless you know your destination has good, fast internet. Now, a quick note, after copying the photos to the external, this is where I've been calling it copy, export, save, all the same idea here, you do need to delete them from the Photos app to free the space. And those photos you copy to the external are no longer editable by the Photos app. I mean, really, you're just kind of using the Photos app as a conduit to move the pictures to the external drive. You could leave a few on the iPad for editing, maybe pick out a few favorites and then share those out and edit them. Or you could invest in a third party program, Raw Power or Pixelmator Photo. Both apps I've tested and they do allow you to edit raw files on external devices and they offer some really solid raw editing capabilities and are quite affordable. Now, another option you might want to consider is Lightroom. Many of you watching this video are probably Lightroom and Photoshop subscribers. You pay some dollars a month and that gives you both versions of Lightroom, the version that you can run on your iPad and the version you can run on your home laptops or desktops, although there's some overlap now. But 
let's set that aside. In a lot of ways, this is very similar to the Photos app, but one of the benefits right up front is it's easy on a card that has RAWs and JPEGs to sort by file type and only import the RAWs. It's very easy to show what has already been imported. And of course, you've got very professional editing tools. If you are a Lightroom user, this is gonna seem very comfortable to you. It's gonna be very similar and it integrates nicely with Adobe's cloud backup. So online backup of these photos and they're gonna magically appear in your home Lightroom or Lightroom Classic. Now this is, again, very appealing to me and powerful because once they've synced at home with Lightroom Classic, you can drag those synced files into a new folder and you are moving the original RAWs to a location of your choosing. And as someone with a consistent folder structure, I really appreciate how easy this is and how easy it is to free up that Adobe Cloud space. They're just gonna vanish from your iPad and now be in your Lightroom Classic library. Adobe for Rides 20 gigabytes as part of the standard photography plan. If you add another $10 a month, you can bump that up to one terabyte, which probably for many photo trips will be enough, but it's gonna really come down to the amount of space you have on your iPad, whether or not this online backup system is gonna work for you. Again, though, I wanna stress, you need to have good internet for this online backup sync to happen. But even if you don't, at least when you return home, that sync is going to happen. So you won't have to re-import these pictures. And if you've done any rating or editing, those changes are gonna appear in your home catalog. It all works quite well. It's also really easy to export the raw files from Lightroom to an external drive for backup. Like the Photos app, it's not possible to store the originals on an external and work on them in Lightroom on the iPad. This does mean again for the online backup, you need enough free space on your iPad for all the RAWs you capture during your travels. As I said, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. I moved photorec.tv to Squarespace a few years ago and I am so happy with that decision. Their automated tools made it really easy to move my existing site to Squarespace and now I am on a platform that looks beautiful, is so easy to add content to, and it's secure. Now, many of you watching this are photographers. Squarespace provides beautiful portfolios and gallery pages. All you need to do is pick a template and drag and drop. It really is that easy. But if for any reason you get stuck, they provide 24 seven customer support. If you wanna sell your work, the integrated e-commerce system is incredibly simple to set up and they also offer an appointment scheduling system. Very useful for photographers booking portrait sessions and more. They also have awesome email and marketing tools. I know email seems a bit old fashioned, but it remains an excellent way to reach your potential customers. And the way it all integrates into Squarespace, it is excellent. It's truly a fantastic all-in-one platform. You can try Squarespace for free for 14 days, no credit card required. Start at squarespace.com slash TV to save 10% off your first purchase. And finally, we have the Files app. The benefit here is this is the most straightforward with no of this import export nonsense and then clearing files out. Simply select all of the photos from the SD card on the camera and copy to a folder on your external hard drive. Now it does require a hub because you want both the SD card and the external drive attached at the same time. I mean, I guess you could copy them to the iPad, unplug, plug in the external, move them again, but that's really messy just buy yourself a $30 hub and it's gonna make it so much better. So you bring along a two terabyte SSD like this, same drive that I use attached to my laptop and you've got so much space, you can go on a long trip backing up photos and videos and it's just gonna work really well. But there are some drawbacks. There is no easy way to track what has already been imported and copied. And the selection tool for dealing with lots of photos, it's a little clunky. And the app itself is a little clunky, meaning it just doesn't always work the way you want. And it froze on me a few times while I was creating this video. So I recommend you take a look at something like the FE File Manager. It is a free version. It makes it a little bit easier. The interface seems more solid and it didn't freeze on me at all. And the pro version adds in some additional features that might be worth the $4.99, including backing up to other online services that you might already pay for, like Google Drive or Dropbox. Note, you cannot edit in Lightroom or Photos using this method without also importing those files back into the iPad storage space. So this really means it's about backup and less about viewing the photos, but you can still spot check, just 
click a photo and it opens up. And as I mentioned earlier in this video, there are two affordable programs that will allow you to browse and edit RAWs stored on an external drive. Pixelmator Photo, $7.99, and RAW Photo for $9.99. Both are excellent. I'm really impressed with the raw editing capabilities provided by those programs. So you might want to consider them. So I opened this video by saying I'm not gonna be leaving my laptop at home anytime soon when I'm traveling for workshops, but for shorter personal trips, this iPad saves space and weight, and it is a very capable device for backing up and editing pictures. The method I like is pairing FE File Manager along with Pixelmator or RAW Photo for those occasional edits. Although if it's a short trip where I judge I have enough space on the iPad, I do love the idea of Lightroom automatically syncing over my pictures, even if it doesn't happen until I'm home. I'd love to know what method works best for you. Is this something you're considering? Let me know down in the comments or if you found any other solution. Every time I thought I was wrapping up a section of this video, I would realize that there was another way to do something else until it got a little bit longer and a little bit longer. I'm gonna have a separate video that shows just the step-by-step -step for each method in a very clear without all of the extra talky-talky about the pros and cons of them. So you can look for that right down below. And if you appreciated this video, take a moment to hit that thumbs up button and then consider subscribing so that you'll be notified of future videos. Hit that bell so you'll actually get those notifications. And of course, you can follow me on Instagram. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.